If you're watching this premiere live, check out the Field Effects stream in one hour for a demo show and a bit of an update on Tiny Code Christmas. There's a link in the description. Welcome to Tiny Code Christmas Day 6. Today, we're going to talk about a classic demo scene effect, the sign scroller. This isn't something that you see too often in size coded productions because text takes up a lot of space, but it's still a great effect. Stay tuned for a little bit of an overview and then we'll break off into the platform specific code. So today we're going to be taking a look at a sign scroller and if you take a look at the orange dot that is the motion of the sign in isolation. Just a nice up and down motion where it decelerates when it gets to the edges of the circle. Now we are going to combine this vertical motion with some straightforward horizontal motion to create a sign scroller. Stay tuned for the tick 80 or skip ahead to Pico 8. So this is the basic setup that we're going to use for our code. I have a text variable up the top and I've just put some text, tiny code Christmas into it. I have my timer set at t equals zero and I'm gonna use t equals t plus one to add one to it every frame. I'm clearing the screen and I'm going to get some text on the screen first. So I am gonna take a look at help for the print function and we can see that it takes a text that you want to print out, an X and Y position, it takes a color, Fixed equals to false by default, and that's where we want a uh, fixed width font. So scale equal to one is how big we want to draw, and then a small font, true or false. So there's two fonts in tick 80, and you can press this button and take a look at what the small font looks like if you want. I find that way too small to code with, so I'll stick to the chunky one. So I'm going to print, and I'm going to print text. I'm just going to print it at 0, 0 in color 1 first. And we can see Tiny Code Christmas printed in the top left hand corner. Perfect. Now, the rest of these are the fixed. So I'm going to set this to true. And if we run it now, you'll see that with the fixed width font, the kerning, the space between the letters, is slightly different than if I set it to false. So we're going to set this to true for now, and the scale is the last one I'm interested in. So the scale is 1 by default. If I make it 2, 3, 4, 5, you get the idea. It basically increases the scale so that we can have a nice chunky scroller. So I'm just going to change the color to something with a little bit more visibility. And you can even go up to 10 or 20 if we want really big text. So I'm going to stick with around 3 for now. Um, it's nice and visible. And what we need to do for our scroller is we need to be able to print every letter individually. It's not enough to print the scroller all at once. What we have to do is we have to iterate over each individual letter, print that out, and modify the Y value so that it has some element of a sign value to it. So I'm going to iterate over this and we are going to go from one and we're going to go from one to hash text. So um, why are we going from one? Anytime you're dealing with um, a piece of text, a string, or you are dealing with a table, an array essentially in Lua, they are one indexed instead of what you may be familiar with as the zero indexed. So we're essentially counting from one to the end of our string, and that will be inclusive. So we start at one, and this is essentially the count of this string. Now Lua doesn't have a way of indexing a string easily, in the way that we might want. Like I can't just go um, text one in brackets and run it. It'll just it'll just give me nil regardless of what I put in there. So what I, we need to do in, instead is we need to use the string module. We need to use the sub function, which will give us a sub string, which means it will give us a smaller string from a larger string. I need to specify which piece of this, which string that I want, which is text that I've called it and which start and end point I want. I'm going to use I for both the start and the end point here because that is going to return one character for me. 
Now, I am also just going to split this off over a few lines to make it a bit easier to see on the screen. So we have our string, that sub, and if I run this, it will now print every character individually, but it will print every single character individually at zero, zero location. So X zero, Y zero. So what we need to do is we need to change this up a bit so that the X position is scaled so that each letter is printed at a different horizontal position. So I'm just gonna take the width of the font, the, there are six pixels wide, and then we're scaling it by three. So that means that each letter is going to be approximately 18 pixels wide, and we're going to multiply that by I. And if I run it, we'll, we're back to a situation where we have our tiny code Christmas. So that is going to um, scale it. And you can see, since this is one indexed, 18 times one means that the text now, instead of starting over at the edge of the screen, it now starts 18 pixels in. So that might be something that we need to take account of depending on how we want to build our scroller. So that is our X position, our X coordinate. Um, now let's take a look at the Y position. So I'm gonna move it down the screen a bit to approximately the center and give it around 55. What we want to do is we want to modify or modulate its height with a cosine value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a value to it, um, math.sign i, and math.sign i is going to give us a value that isn't going to change too much. Because again, the sign values are going to be between one and minus one, so what we need to do is multiply this maybe by five. And you'll see now that we have a scroller effect or we have a sine wave essentially rippling through our text. And the more I multiply that sine value, the higher the amplitude of that sine wave. So 10 looks good. And we now have a sine wave going through our text. Let's subtract T from the exposition. And we can see that our text now moves off to the left, but there's still something kind of missing from this. We want the sign to move in a sine wave and not be static and animated, just moving horizontally. We want each letter to be animated vertically as well, like you saw in the intro. Your challenge today is to finish the sign scroller. The text needs to wrap around when it finishes and goes off the screen. It has to come back in off the other side and each letter has to move up and down independently as it travels along. You don't have to use the default text and there's a size limit of 256 characters because you're probably wanna gonna put some nice background in with your sign scroller as well. And in a time-honored demo scene tradition, if you want, you can put some greetings in your code to say hi to some of the other Tiny Code Christmas participants. So this is the setup that we're going to use for our sign scroller. And I have some text up the top that I have Tiny Code Christmas um, assigned to. I have my draw function, I'm clearing the screen, and I'm gonna print out some text. So I'm gonna print out this text to, and I'm gonna give it color two. So we should see that text up the top of the screen there. And what I'm gonna do now, is I am going to move this to its own line so that we can um, spread it out a bit better. And what we need to do to get our sign scroller going is to iterate over each individual letter in text. And what we need to do to do that is we need a for loop for i equal to one. When we're dealing with for loops in tick 80 and we're iterating over text or tables, we have to start at one and then, and then we then hashed, which takes us to the last character. So whatever length text is, it'll be represented by this. And we can get it by whatever this is, and we can get it by putting hash in front of the text. So to access each individual letter, then we just use a square bracket with i, whatever variable we're using to iterate over the text. And I'm going to print it, and in the x value here, I am going to use uh, four multiplied by i, and if we run it, we'll see we get our tiny code Christmas printed out 
one letter at a time and you can tell because it is starting at four pixels in which is one times four. I'm now going to move it down the screen a bit to about um, 50 and run it. I'll go a bit further, 60 and what I'm going to do, I'll add in maybe 20 pixels there to move it into the center of the screen and what we need to do is we need to modulate the height with the sign. So I'm going to add sign value of sign i to it. That's not going to do anything because the way uh, Pico 8 works for sign values is it just, uh, if it's a whole number, it's um, not going to change over time. So we need to divide it by 9 to give ourselves a bit of variance. So sign is only going to give us back between minus 1 and 1 and I need to multiply this by let's say 10 and now we have a nice sign effect. I might want to animate it by scrolling it to the left by adding a component of time but we're not finished. Well you're not finished you have to finish the animation. What we want is we want the individual letters to move up and down not just stay stationary like they are there when they're moving horizontally. So your challenge is to finish the sign scroller. When the text scrolls off the side of the screen, it has to, off the left of the screen, it has to come back in on the right. Each letter has to individually undulate in a sign motion. And in the time-honored demo scene tradition, why not give some greetings to some of the fellow participants on Tiny Code Christmas? Your character limit for today is 256 characters because you might want to put some other effects in there on top of it as well. Best of luck!